Good afternoon, EXP people. Um, this is going to be a demo with Paul Eastwood from My Buying Buddy. And I have been searching high and low for a true IDX CRM plugin that works within the WordPress website. So I'm excited to turn the controls over to Paul and let him show you what this plugin does. We're already using it on our websites and um, I'm really excited to have you here. Thank you, Paul. Hey, thanks, Shuri. Well, I'm uh, excited to be here and, and talking to you all. And um, I hope that uh, this afternoon I can give you a quick overview, which is uh, useful. Uh, it gives you the right depth of knowledge of, of what our service does. Um, just a little bit of background about us. Um, you know, I uh, set up my company in about 2002, so many, many years ago. Uh, and we started building websites for agents uh, back in those days. But uh, the big thing that happened, of course, was that IDX came along. And uh, as soon as we started using IDX, everyone started generating a lot of leads. And my background is that I worked in IBM uh, for many years, both on the sales and marketing side. And we quickly saw that there was a big need to manage leads and to help agents with that whole process of, of managing leads and doing that business development. So um, today, our product is called the My Buying Buddy IDX CRM Suite. And it really is a full integration of IDX components for a website, along with a pretty sophisticated CRM solution in the back end that supports uh, both agents and teams and offices. So um, I'm going to start off by just showing you a little bit of the front end. And uh, Cherie's got some uh, awesome websites that she's built, uh, which now use our technology. Here's a good example of one that we're looking at here. So uh, you can certainly reach out to Cherie and get more examples of these. But uh, I'm going to nip over to our demonstration website, which is called charliesmithrealty.com. And uh, just, you know, just walk you through just for a short while on what the front end, the IDX component looks like. I'm not going to spend too long on this. And then I'm going to jump into the back end and I'm going to look at how we capture leads and also how we manage leads and, and what tools are there. So I'm not expecting to draw this out for too long, maybe 15, 20 minutes at the most. Uh, so um, we'll take questions at the end. But this is the, a good example of a website that's using our plugin. And our plugin works on uh, you know all sorts of platforms. It just so happens this happens to be a WordPress website. Uh, it's possible with our plugin to create custom search forms. So you know a really key part of marketing is how can we give consumers exactly what they're looking for? Well, you don't have to use a standard search form. You can build a search form, make it look like anything you like. You know one of our key uh, goals when we integrate to any MLS is to pull in all the MLS fields, not just some of them, but all of them. Because, you know, of course, with the CRM at the back end, you as an agent, if you need to send, you know, properties to clients uh, where the master bedroom's on the first floor or they're interested in mountain views or whatever, then of course we need to have that. Uh, so it's we we try hard to integrate everything. So you can see here, it's a nice, you know, we've got search forms, we've got a nice presentation of properties. We call this a gallery display or a grid display. Uh, when we when we run a search, um, the search basically will bring back the results panel. So this kicks us over to a results page. Paul, can I ask a, a real quick question? Sure. Um, on the quick search, so are you telling us that uh, I could do a special quick search for everything that is um, let's say in Coronado, San Diego, and that also lists if the seller is going to carry back. So if I had a special yes. page for that, I could create a filter for that. Uh, absolutely, yes. I mean, so so like I said, one of the one of the things we're trying to do is pull in all the data. Well, assuming that we've got all the fields, and you know, we're 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 always open to requests. If people see fields that we need, then we'll we'll work hard to pull those in. Where we try to do. We try to pull in all those important ones uh, when we integrate to an MLS. But now we've got that data, you can slice and dice that data any way you like in your website. So, so one example I gave there was you could create a custom search form, which allows you to create a search experience. In other words, you could just say, hey, uh, this form is just for homes in Coronado, over a million dollars, you know, that are fix-ups, if such a thing existed. Um, and and just, just put in your price range and go. And, and so you could hide all the other values and you could put design it any way you like. Or you could create custom search links. And custom search links are just links that you click on. So you could put those in your Facebook pages or wherever you want, or put them in emails, or even create pages where you've got uh, links that just say, hey, see these properties, see these properties, and so on. 
uh, or you can uh, do presentations of properties on a web page using our various widgets, whether it be the, the map widget or uh, a display widget or whatever. So, so, so the nice thing about Charlie Smith is I have all of these things shown on this particular website. Um, so let me digress a little and, and show you that. So here's, here's a neighborhood page we have where we show a lot of these things. So these are custom search links. They're just links, but behind them, if I click on them and I say go, uh, you'll see this takes us to a page and we use a filter in the top here. And we have a wizard in our system. You don't have to know about this stuff. You don't have to be technically competent to do this. Uh, or a whiz on programming, there's a wizard that will spit out these bits of code for you. So this is a link. You can say, yeah, click this link and see homes for sale in this city or up to a 350 or whatever you want. Then you can present properties. In this case, I've got an animated uh, showcase of properties and it's just showing million dollar homes. Uh, so the filter here is show million dollar homes where the city is this and use this certain presentation widget. We have um, this really fabulous map widget, which allows you to present properties on a map. And again, the nice thing here is if you want to, you can even overlay and combine with the results a shape. You can use that on all the filters on any widgets, but this one's on the map, so it shows up on the map. Uh, and this is nice. I mean, you can zip out to full screen and uh, you know, it's a very nice interactive map, uh, allows consumers to see. So it's nice if you've got a little area you're focusing on and you want to showcase it. And then down below that, more results again with a filter. So you can slice and dice the data any way you want, which is a very, very important. And it's a powerful way for you to use the MLS data for your own marketing. That's so important. I think, you know, gone are the days where you just put in a, an IDX uh, capability in a frame. Uh, now what we can do is really let you slice and dice that data any way you like. So take a look at, um, uh, at uh, Charlie Smith, uh, you know, because this has a lot of examples of how you can use the information and our components. So we got search components, and as you can see down here, this is just the demo data, but you can see here we got all the fields. Uh, this is our regular or standard search form. So on the standard search form, it's got all the fields. We try to put all of those components in there together. Uh, when you see results, uh, they come back looking like this. This is our standards results view, but you can flip this between the list view or a grid view or a map view. It's all possible to change things around. Now, our map will show up, uh, I think it's like six and a half thousand points on a map. So we really try to make sure that when people see the map, they're seeing everything on the map. Um, so we've got nice slider bars, interactions, all of those types of things. You'll see here colors. They can all be changed. Everything's themable, uh, very easy to change and move around. Um, if I go back to the list view and I click on a property, we'll then see the property details. We obviously bring in all the photographs and you can zip through. We have virtual tour links, things like that brought in and lots of lead capture methods too. Like, yeah, because what we want to do is we want to try and encourage, obviously, consumers to sign up and we have soft lead capture methods. So add to favorites, schedule a showing, get additional information, send to a friend. These are soft methods. Uh, and we have hard methods as well. So a configuration option in your account is, I only want to let someone search two times, and then I'm going to force them to sign up. Or I'm going to uh, let them see three properties, and then they're going to have to sign up. So all of those things are uh, configurable and a key part of our service. Paul, and again, in Charlie Smith, yes. We just got sorry. a really good question. Um, mm. You know, sometimes when we're working with WordPress, plugins will conflict with themes. Are you, uh, do you know of any themes in particular where there are conflicts, or does this pretty much work with the, the current themes that are out there? Well, that's a great question. So, um, you know, I would say in the early days when we were starting to do a lot of this stuff with WordPress, we, we found a lot of uh, conflicts. I mean, WordPress is a bit of Wild West. I mean, you can add in whatever you like. So uh, we certainly have to deal with that. But today it's a very stable and uh, non-conflicting uh, plugin. Works very, uh, very robustly in many, many uh, themes. There are things to watch out for. For example, I, I advise my clients not to pick because uh, there are many real, so-called real estate themes out there. Well, the thing about real estate themes is they, they've already done the work for you in terms of the layout and the presentation of how properties and, and information is going to look. Well, we don't use any of that stuff. I mean, our component, it looks like this. So if you find a theme that's got all this fabulous presentation of properties, we, our plugin doesn't use that. Uh, it, it presents properties you know, according to our widgets and the way we do it. So avoid those themes. Find themes that are uh, spacious. They've got spaces in. And then you know, when you put the 
when you drop the code in, the short code into pages, it just does what it's supposed to do, show the map, show the properties, show a search form, whatever. We, um, we, there, we like mm -hmm. to see our clients using the Divi theme, and the Divi theme is what um, EXP Realty has provided the agents, and we're not having any problems with it. Well, that's, yeah, that's great. I mean, yeah, I don't think there are any specific themes that we come across that have uh, caused us, you know, major problems other than that expectation, which is that, oh, I'm going to use this theme. That's how my property is going to look. And the answer is no. You know, you're going to be using our widgets and components that will present stuff. But here's the nice thing. I mean, uh, you know, if we go to the website that you just created recently, uh, you can see here you've done a lot to customize the way this presentation looks. You've even added your own overlays, the sale button. Uh, and all sorts of things, which is a great example of how flexible our our code is. So at a simplistic level, we have themes, which are easy to use by anyone with no technical skills. But if you're more technical, then all the CSS and coding is visible. You can manipulate it and write your own CSS to do uh, very advanced things. So it's quite flexible in that regard. OK. so. Um, Yes, one of the key things here then is uh, in terms of presenting properties, and I'll, I'll just wrap up on this, uh, but Charlie Smith Realty is a great place to look, and you can see here, for example, uh, examples of how to do lead capture. For example, uh, not only can you create custom search forms, but you can create custom lead capture forms. Uh, and that's important because everyone wants to capture leads in different ways, create splash pages, landing pages, yep. you know, one-step yep. landing page, two-step landing pages. So we have a lot of API or, or, or integration points where you can easily create these, uh, these forms and code blocks that you can use. We even have some of these things as a standard widget components, but they're a lot simpler than this. Uh, but to create your own is very, very easy. And I think, Sherry, you've been doing some of that. So this is another powerful extension uh, uh, for our service. Well, and um, we can refer to those as squeeze pages or landing pages. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, the last thing I'll, I'll mention before I get off this topic is the idea of SEO. So you know, one, one the way our technology works is we are not using iframe. Names. We're not using subdomains or anything like that. Uh, our plugin seamlessly embeds directly into your WordPress site, and this is a WordPress specific feature. Um, and so, uh, for SEO, that is. And so, with WordPress, we are able to deliver quite a nice SEO set of benefits. Uh, the pages, uh, all the content is on the pages. Uh, when we look at a property like this property, for example, uh, you can see here there's some very clever stuff going on. It's actually presented as an overlay. We changed the URL up here. But if I actually go to that page, this every property has its own indexable page. And of course, we change the H1 tags and all the meta tags so that you get great SEO benefit uh, from all of this rich content that's available for, for property details. So that's something our clients have used quite uh, quite to their advantage. With WordPress, what's nice is that you can take this property data and not only embed it on pages or sections, but you can also put content in blog posts. So if you're a keen blogger and you're writing about a neighborhood, why not put property display in that blog post? Here are the latest five properties for sale in this neighborhood. So um, you know it's very flexible and robust, and of course all of that uh, type of information is all adding to your SEO. So it's a powerful solution for SEO. You know, if that's something that you're you're looking for. So, um, and, gonna... and pushing it easily over to social media. Yes, indeed. Uh, we don't have an automated method to push information to social media, but uh, it's easy to put links in your Facebook, or that basically, like I said before, the custom search links, links, and things like that are easy to get back to your get get people out of your social media advertising, like you do Facebook adverts. You can pull people straight back using those custom search links or pull them back to a landing page. Um, so all of those things are possible. And of course, on the property details page in WordPress, there's actually the share button. So you can easily share the property directly back to Facebook. There are the share buttons that do that. So um, Shuri, if it's OK, I think what I'll do then is move on to the, the back end to talk about the CRM. Is, there, is that a good time to do that? Yes, I don't have any questions okay. right now, so let's go. Okay, so so let's look at uh, the the CRM. Um, 
and uh, this is uh, this is this is every, everyone the, the way the, the way our system works is that we set up all the agents. Uh, if you're an independent agent, then of course you're going to have what we call a single user account. If you're a team, then you'll have a multi-user account, and everyone's got different permissions. Everyone sees just their stuff. Of course, administrators get to see everything. But most of our customers are usually independent agents, and we have a, a good collection of uh, teams as well that to use our product very aggressively to, to to generate a lot of traffic to websites, capture leads, and then use round robin and methods like that to distribute leads out. I and, want to start off here. Well, mm -hmm. and um, important to note is that this all sits within your WordPress website. You don't have to go out to another product. Yes, this is all web accessible. It's all, all available on your browser, okay? So all of the information that's going on with the widgets in your WordPress website is completely integrated and tied back into um, the view of the leads activity here in the CRM solution. So, uh, and this is critical. We have a lot of clients, I have a lot of conversations with agents who keep telling me they've got their third, you know, they've got their own external CRM. And, and, I, and I really go, you know, we have an interesting conversation uh, about how you know, if you're using an external CRM, then you're essentially trying to work with leads with three arms or two arms and a leg missing because without the not without the information that uh, uh, tells you what this lead is looking at when they logged in, how many homes they're looking at, the price range, any notes they've kept, what alerts they're getting, have they opened the emails, all of this information is completely integrated into the CRM and is very much part of that uh, leads home search experience, which of course is an amazing insight for you as a salesperson trying to work a lead and close the deal. Uh, this, it, it's just an amazing uh, a benefit that we have in the real estate industry compared to other industries. So uh, we are huge advocates, of course, of this whole concept of integrated CRM to the IDX. Um, so on this dashboard, <clears throat> this is where you where you log in. And you can see what we have here is just a basic summary of what's been going on. So it tells you your to-do items, calls to make, inquiries to answer, tasks, things that are late. Uh, gives you an insight into lead activity. You know how many leads have, have recently signed up, returning leads, how many alerts are going out, uh, and all this sort of stuff. Any areas that are issues like alerts expiring or drippy, you know, leads without a drip campaign, all that sort of stuff is presented here. On top of that, we have some really excellent reports, uh, and you can uh, elect within your profile to receive daily alerts and notifications. So if you want to get a report every morning that's telling you what's going on in your uh, account with all your leads, then you can elect to receive daily alerts and notifications that tell you this type of information and give you links to click on to go and see these leads. On top of that, while I'm talking about alerts and notifications, you know, you can choose to receive notifications and alerts for all sorts of things. If a lead comes back in or signs up or logs in or saves properties, you can choose to get an email alert or a text alert as those things are occurring. So the system's there and the reports are there to really help you understand exactly what's going on. Because half of the challenge here, of course, is seeing the wood for the trees, you know, really getting that focus down in on leads. So uh, from the dashboard then, let's drill down. Let's go and see these eight calls I've got to make. Um, so this is our view that really allows Natalie, who's the agent here, to see the calls she's got to make. Um, and of course, uh, you know, we've got all these calls. We can see when they're due. These are all due today. We show how many calls have already been made. Uh, if I click the blue links, then that just takes us straight into being able to you know, view the task or complete the task, which we'll look at in a minute. We can quickly filter by all the due, future items, items that are due today, inquiries, calls, all those types of things. We can, we've got various sorts up here as well. Okay, So there's lots of, lots of different ways in which I can manipulate this information. So if I call, click on here and we go and look at this call, oh, sorry, one other thing we show here is you can see here we try to summarize you know, the star rating, uh, which is allows you to set a, what you see as the star rating for the lead. We also have a sales uh, forecasting and a sales step analysis. And so within each an account, you can set up a sequence of steps and say, okay, this is my seven step sales process. And we can see here that uh, this, this lead, Chrissy Baldwin, she's on the nurture step. So for, for obviously for Natalie, for her account, that means a lot to her. So she can see quickly where they are. If we go to the call, uh, com the task completion panel, then, um, actually this is a bad example. Let's go back and find one that we've got a whole bunch of stuff on, hang on. So um, on this particular example with Martha, we can see 
This is the task completion panel. So here's the information of the call. Those are the notes to do with the call, or the task, I should say. And then we can quickly down here tag the outcome. You know, was it a call? Do we speak? Do we leave a message? And so on. And these are used in stat various stats and reports to tell you whether or not you've been speaking to the client or haven't spoken to them and so on. On the right hand side, because of course, you know, we're working with a lead, we want to know what's been going on. We show the lead history over here. We actually show you what's been happening with the lead. So on one panel, you've got the complete view of what's going on. And uh, you know this will only continue to improve uh, this layout uh, to provide more information as we go forward. But this is a nice panel. And of course, if you're completing a task and you need to schedule a follow-up, then you can quickly put in an additional follow-up task, uh, schedule it as a call or whatever, and uh, mark as complete, and then it goes into the history record, and then we're done. So if we go to the Martha Callum record, by clicking on Martha's name, we'll actually go to the lead detail page itself. So this is the way our lead detail page looks. Uh, we have at the top here a block, which is all the summary information about the lead, you know, their email, their, their time frame, star rating. We can have multiple websites uh, set up an account. So an account can support a single account can support multiple MLSs, multiple websites, and multiple users, and uh, various ways to configure those uh, as, as to, to reflect the marketing setup that you need. Um, so we often, if it's a multi-website uh, account, we'll tell you where the leads come from. And then we've got buttons here that allow you to record various things. Uh, so the call button at the moment is just uh, an option to record or log a call. Um, and uh, one of the things I, I, I've been telling Cherie is that uh, a big development item for the moment is that this will become a click-to-call methodology uh, within the next few months, along with an additional button here, which will be SMS texting, because uh, all our clients want the ability to send and receive SMS text. So click-to-call and SMS texting is a big, big development item for us, which is top priority and will be rolled out in the next uh, few months. So if I want to log a call, I just click on call, and it just allows me to put in some notes here. And again, I get the same sort of outcome tracking as I did before. Was it a call? Did I speak to them? And, and at the same time, I can say, yeah, I'm going to schedule a follow-up task. Or I can send an email. So again, uh, you know, with our system, the emails are sent from within the system. So here is a form. Here is a form to let you send an email to the lead. Okay, so we're going to send an email to the lead from this system. So we can put it, use a template that already exists. So I might have a standard template that I'm using. Uh, I can send a CC. We've got lots of dynamic information. So we can insert, for example, you know, when their search load is expiring or how many listings they've they've recently received. Um, and we can attach files and so on. So this would actually send an email to the client. And it's going to come from your email address. And okay, because it can be branded mm -hmm. to you. Yes, it can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's important. So we're Although we're sending this out on your behalf, when the lead receives that, it looks like it's come from you and it's branded from you. Uh, and of course, when they reply, they're replying to your email address. But uh, all emails are sent from the system. And again, um, you know, without getting dwelling on this type of stuff too much, but uh, we do see a big opportunity to do much, much more in terms of email integration. And that's that's a, a big development item for us, which is uh, on its way. So. Um, that would allow me to send emails. I can create notes, same sort of idea as logging a call or task. Again, I can create a task. And if in a multi-user system, I can actually create tasks for other users in my account. I could create tasks for my assistant or my colleague or whoever. So uh, I can put it in a task. I can assign it to someone else, give it a due date, put in the call details and things like that, and uh, off we go. So um, I'm going to get rid of that. Um, so that's the uh, that's putting in a task and uh, create property alert. I'll look at it in a minute with say properties, but let me just dive on through this. So in the pro, so we're going. We're looking at a lead here. We're looking at this specific lead, and uh, for this lead, we can see here these various tabs of information now that are available. Obviously, uh, we've broken up the information for a lead so you can see it nicely organized. So the first tab here is the profile tab. And uh, this allows us to set a sales forecast, put in some sticky notes, to categorize it, add tags. We can see all the various assignments. We can add additional contacts and all that sort of stuff, usual profile stuff. Most importantly, though, over here, you can see information about what this lead's been looking at. What have they been looking at? 
where do they come from? When do they when do they sign up? How did they sign up? What was the lead source? When did they last log in? Are they opted in or opted out of leads, uh, out of emails? We can see all this information uh, down here on this profile page. And, and you know what, this is a really boring new lead. So let's go and find a nice lead that's a bit aged. And let's go and find, uh, let's go and find an older lead and see if we can find someone who's got a bunch of information. Here we go. So uh, let's look at a different lead here. And we can see here, uh, all this information is now filled in. Okay, uh, so that's a nice perspective on the uh, the lead uh, profile. The sales forecast. If I just show you how that works, it's just a great way of categorizing uh, what's happening with your lead. So you know these are the steps. Uh, you know I think we have some sample steps set up, but if you want to set up your own, you can set them up. It's just a sequence of steps that allows you to track the progress of your engagement with any lead. At the same time, you can put in some revenue. So you could say, okay, I'm at uh, pre-listing and we were expecting to make $4,000 commission and it's gonna close in whenever, September, and put in some notes. So that allows you to keep a record. And then we've got a nice report that will actually uh, look at all your leads and show you how much money you're gonna make each month. Uh, and I'll take a quick look at that at the end. Um, so that's the sales forecast on the history record, on the history tab. We have here a list of all the things that are going on, all the activity with the lead. So we show not only you know, drip campaigns, manual campaigns, uh, logs of calls, everything that's gone out and gone in, we show, we show it all here. And you can click on all of these items to see the details. And of course, you can filter out the things you don't want to see. If there are tasks, then you would see tasks here. Um, alerts. These are property alerts. So this is all part of our system. Okay, you can set up property alerts for your clients or Remember, we talked about that uh, lead capture method on the website. That, of course, is a big value proposition for leads on the website. Hey, you can set up your own property alerts, as many as you like, use map areas, all of those types of things. And you can save properties and keep notes. All of those things are available to the consumer on their website. But of course, in the back end here, you can not only see that, but you can interact with those, change them, and set up additional ones as well. So in this case, we've just got one email alert set up. And you can see a little bit of detail here. If I click on the uh, if I click on the history, then we'll see the history of whether they're opening emails or not. So we can see here back in July, you know, we were sending properties to this lead, and they were clicking on the email. So these are the, did they open email? Were they clicking on links and looking at properties? So you can see, you know, back in June, they were opening emails and they were looking at properties. So all this information is available to you. Nice audit trail of what's going on. Uh, inside the system for that lead. Paul, we, Paul, we just got a really good question uh, on, on the drip campaigns. Those are set in default, but can we um, customize the, the campaigns? Absolutely. So, so I'm going to come on to let me come on to campaigns because uh, I'm going to I'm going to that's going to be my last tab here for campaigns. So I'll come on to that in two ticks. Um, let me just cover listings. So listings will show you all the listings that the client has looked at. So this client hasn't really been looking at too many too many properties or saving properties, but you can see all the properties that they've been looking at, whether they've saved or had any notes on them. We show you statistics on the cities and everything. So not a particularly good example because this person hasn't really been looking at a lot of properties. But uh, this is great in terms of, you know, when for one of your leads that's actually actively looking at properties, opening your emails, getting alerts and things like that. This will give you a tremendous insight into uh, the properties they're looking at. And then last of all, let's talk about campaigns to your question then, Shuri. Um, so with campaigns, we have what we call uh, action plan or drip campaigns. Uh, they're not just emails. These action plan campaigns consist of both actions and activities and emails and you can mix and match the whole thing up. So this particular lead is attached to a campaign called short-term buyer with calls. Uh, they're on step 15. We can see some stats here, how many emails and tasks and calls have happened in this campaign. If I click on the magnifying glass and I can see this particular campaign that's attached to this lead. So these are the steps. And the way the campaigns work is there's, you can just create as many steps as you want. They're just actions. And each action step can be uh, an email, or an activity like a call or a to do or a task. So in this particular uh, drip campaign, this particular client has set up uh, quite an extensive, uh, aggressively calling campaign where you can see call, call, email, call, email, call. 
Wow, that's a lot of jobs for someone to do. So, <laughs> but that's how he manages his team. Okay, he creates these campaigns and he has a very strict process and sequence of activities he wants his team members to go through. And as a single agent, you know, you may decide that some leads are going to be on this type of activity plan, uh, whereas other activity plans could be just emails. Uh, let me show you those as an example. So if I go into the marketing tab over here and we click on campaigns, um, our, the default system comes in the, with the library campaign. So we have some library campaigns set up. Uh, my campaigns are campaigns that I have created as a user. And account campaigns are campaigns that anyone in the system in the, in the account has created and they've shared in the account. Okay, So we can see here, for example, uh, first 10 days email only. Uh, if I click on that, we can see this is what this campaign looks like. So there's no no calling, it's just emails and things for the agent to do. So you can see in this particular case, you know, on day zero, which is as soon as the lead comes in, uh, we have a task, which is uh, an email. It says, thank you for visiting you know, Python Realty. And there's a task for the agent, set up the email, set up a search alert for this lead. And then after another day, just checking in, and then also send another lead, another email, are you receiving the listings? And then another task, monitor, you know, do some checking out. So you see no calling in this one. It's just emails and tasks for the agent, drives the agent through the first 10 days. These are ever so easy to create. If you go to the back to the campaigns tab, and if I wanted to create a campaign, then I just click on add campaign. I can start from scratch or I can copy a new one, one that's already in existence. Either way, it doesn't make, you know, it's very easy. As soon as you've done that, You'll then be taken to a panel like this, which is empty, but you can add an activity. So click on Add Activity, and you just decide, what is it? Is it an email, task, call? Who's it going to? Uh, because one of the things in a multi-user system is that multiple users could be assigned to a single lead. So if you have a team of an agent, a loan officer, an assistant, and so on, then all of those roles can be assigned to a, to a lead. So multiple people can be working the same lead use in different roles. And then you can sort of tag team people using the campaign system and say, okay, on day one, I want to uh, schedule a call for the agent to call them up. And on day two, I'm going to send an email. On day four, I want my assistant to do this. And on day six, I want the loan officer to send an email. So you can make it look like that with your uh, with your drip campaign system. So very nice. So very easy to set up a campaign. Of course, you're going to use these dynamic variables to insert the lead's first name and things like that. And then you know you can drag them, drag these action these steps around. Just structure your campaign the way you want it to be structured. Okay. Um, so I have um, a question. Yeah. Sorry uh -huh. for the feedback. It won't record if I uh, take the the echo off here. Okay. Can you put multiple loan officers into the system? Well, each yes, of course. Each 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 loan officer is a um, uh, is a user. So you just have you know if you have a, if you have on a user if you want a system with ten agents and two loan officers, that's totally fine, absolutely. And then when you're working on a lead, you say, okay, this is my loan officer for this lead, and this is my loan officer for that lead. Uh, the round robin system does have rules in it that that uh, or an, or the ability to set up an, a secondary round robin just for loan officers, so you can you know get 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 leads distributed randomly around or rotate them through rotate leads through your loan officers if you do have multiple and you're using the round robin. So yes, the answer is yes, you can do that. Thank you. Um, so if I go back to that, I'm just going to go back to my lead summary tab um, and just. Uh, uh, Summer, this is this is a this is a view that many people come to. So we started off with a dashboard, we looked at the dashboard, and then we looked at our to-do list, and then we drilled down into an agent, uh, into an actual lead, and we looked at the lead with all the different sections on a lead. Uh, we looked at uh, how to set up campaigns. Uh, one of the things I wanted to do was just show you how to, with a with a with a lead, how to set up a property alert. So we want to create a property alert. That's easy. Click property alert for this lead. And then you've got your MLS search form, whatever, you know, whichever MLS or MLS is you have connected into your account. So in this account, we've got a couple of, oh no, I thought we had two. We just got one, one MLS here. Uh, you would create your search alert, uh, put in any criteria you want. When you go to the view properties, this is where you get the map. So then you would draw a shape and add the map. And then if you wanted to create the alert, you would just click on this button up here to say, I want to save the alert and you give it a name, put in some notes. How often do you want the alert to go out all day, uh, daily, weekly, monthly? So, so the daily alerts sort of go out every hour or so, every time we get new listings. So we're updating 
we're typically updating every hour all the data from the MLS. Um, so you can set up these, and you can say, I want to be copied, send an alert now, and so on. So lots of flexibility there. And you can set up as many of these as you like for any particular uh, lead. Um, one of the big things that we are have on the horizon is the ability to do just sold or neighborhood sold reports. So we have sold data for many MLSs now. And where we do have that, we are one of the big plans we have, hopefully the end of the year or early next year, is to have more sort of market monthly market update reports that actually send people uh, analysis and reports on what's been sold in their neighborhood. So um, that's the create property alert button. And then the save property buttons is, is very similar. It just allows you to save properties for the client and make a recommendation on specific properties, uh, almost exactly the same as the create property. Like you run a search, see the properties, and save them. So I wanted to just end by going to the lead summary tab. And on the lead summary tab, this gives you an overview of all your leads. Um, and what we're trying to do here is, is show you, you know, lead information, phone numbers, who they're assigned to, uh, when they last, you know, their activity, uh, the alerts they're getting, calls, emails, all that sort of stuff, all of this is clickable. Then the icons are colored to tell you whether or not they are getting alerts or not getting alerts. And if they've opted out, all of that sort of information is summarized here. Um, in the advanced search options, we have things that allow you to do reverse lookups. So if you want to find, uh, you know, everyone who's looking in uh, Altamonte, then the system will let you find all the leads that have been looking at homes in this uh, city and this price range. Uh, you can search by tags, lead status, all sorts of things. Okay, so the advanced search really gives you a powerful way to go and find the leads you want. Okay, um, so you just touched on, I wish that hmm. echo, let me see if I can uh, make this echo. Yeah, I, I can't ask questions without the echo. It's okay, go ahead. That's right, you, I, it doesn't sound echoey to me. <laughs> it's very echoey on my end. Okay. All right. Uh, why don't you try muting on your end? Try that. How's that? Okay. Oh, my goodness. Awesome. So okay. you, you touched on something important. One of the things that um, helps to organize your thought process is either hashtags or tags. And so you can tag you know, with unlimited tags, whether it's maybe a first-time home buyer or whatever that might be, and then easily find all of those. Um, it might be a particular city. So you just touched on that briefly. Yes, that is correct, and you that's absolutely what you can do. You can set up categories, and which are much more, which are sort of structured ways of categorizing leads, and then hashtags are much more random. You know, you can create a lot of unstructured uh, uh, hashtags and apply them all over the place. But uh, categories tend to be more structured. Um, so yeah, those are easy to set up, and they're easy to apply. Okay. Is there a home value widget? No, we don't have a home valuation widget. Uh, although the way to overcome that, of course, is uh, you know that's a lead. To, to, to the way we would consider look at that is we would say that is a lead capture form. So you can create a, a fabulous lead capture form. So here's Charlie Smith, uh, for example. You could create a, a fabulous form that looks wonderful and put it on your website and say, hey, how much is your home worth? You know, fill in this form and and uh, get the report. Of course, what happens? I mean, this is a good good point for consideration. What happens with a lead capture form? Is very much up to uh, you know deciding that yourself as an agent. Uh, you know you could offer free Starbucks card, holiday in uh, Spain or wherever you want to go. So um, or Mexico, perhaps a little closer. Um, so you know all of those things. The fulfillment of the lead capture form is very much down to you to decide what to do. The only thing that we do do a fulfillment on is where you offer a. Uh, property alerts. Okay, so if you want to offer property alerts, then our system with a custom lead capture form will automatically register the consumer as a lead and set up the property alerts for you and handle all of those things. So the fulfillment of a offer that says, "Hey, get some get property alerts," that's automatically done by a system. But everything else is just going to create a task. Hey, you need to do this. Someone's filled in this form. You need to do something. Okay. Um, we just got a question here. Can agents tag visitors as theirs so they will always see that agent's info on the search results? Absolutely. So, so that's a very, very good point. Uh, in a multi-user environment, uh, gosh, 
it's uh, we we understand and appreciate because we've gone through this uh, a lot how emotive it is to have leads assigned to you and have you know your leads assigned to you and and all that sort of stuff for your listings and so on so we have a lot of very good uh, policies inside the product which ensure those sorts of things happen so if if somebody signs up if i signed up and and i and i was assigned to you Cherie, when I come back to the website, uh, you know, clicking on those just uh, listed alerts or or any of the, the emails that I get, and I'm logged back into the system and I start doing searching, I'm only going to see you, okay, next to the properties. Now, you know, if I go to a roster page, then obviously I'm going to see the roster. But when I'm looking at properties and it says, "Hey, you want information on this property?" it will all it will recognize me. It will know that I'm associated with you, and it will only show your face and uh, uh, contact details that go to you. So yeah, that's a very important, uh, that's a very important consideration. And for not, for leads that come into your website that aren't even registered, uh, we, we also have policies that drive that as well. So if you're in a team uh, or in an office uh, and, and you're doing Facebook advertising or something like that and you're sending traffic to a website or a web page in a shared environment, then we have special referral codes you can put into those links that force uh, the system to recognize that you are the referral source for that uh, for that inquiry for that traffic and will therefore only show you on the website uh, so there are there are many policies like that there there's quite a few of them that all interact you know is it my listing did I send the referral link am I already signed up there's a lot of factors that go into this but we've got some the rules all make sense I think these days and uh, do what everyone expects great thank you Okay. Well, I, I, I think, you know, honestly, I, th I think uh, at this sort of level, uh, we've pretty much gone through uh, everything I, I think I would want to show you right now without getting too bogged down into the detail. I've run over by a good uh, 10 minutes more than I wanted to, but hopefully that's given you a great insight into what we have. Um, by all means, reach out to us if you've got questions, and uh, Sheree, I'll hand back to you. Okay. And so, do you want to go over the cost and the time it takes? What what if you don't have their MLS? Absolutely. Um, so we do have uh, quite a lot of MLSs now integrated across the country, uh, and we're on a mission to integrate more. Um, we have a standard, uh, our pricing structure is very straightforward. Uh, for, for most MLSs, uh, we have a, uh, a monthly fee, which is based upon just the number of users. So if you're an independent agent and you just want the plugin to add into a site that Cherie's going to build for you, then uh, it's 49 bucks a month. Uh, that's our standard service fee, and that includes all the IDX and the CRM. Everything I've shown you is included in that $49. Uh, there may be a setup fee for some of the MLSs. It depends on which MLS, but it's uh, it's not uh, no more than $249. So we charge a $249 setup fee for some of the MLSs. And uh, the only thing on top of that is any pass-through fees that we're required to collect for the MLSs. You know how it goes. These MLSs, they want their money. So in some cases, we do collect a pass-through fee for the MLS, and that can vary. Some are nothing, some are a few bucks, and some can be 20, 30 bucks a month or higher. So um, that's going to be very much down to your MLS, and you'll probably be aware of that anyway. Uh, but uh, that's the standard pricing. And then if you want to go to a multi-user uh, environment, say you've got a team of five, um, then we have a pricing page that will calculate that all out for you. Uh, and uh, essentially, once you get, you know, and it's not necessary to, ne it's not necessary to start off with, you know, the, the maximum that you want. All our system is completely upgradable. So if you want to start off with a single user and go to a multi-user system, then that's all totally fine. Uh, it's very easy to do. And if, for example, you wanted a five-user account, then uh, that would be uh, you know, $128 a month. So it starts off at $77 for two, and then we typically add $17 per month for additional users. So five agent team would be $128 a month. Is there a contract? And there is no contract. Uh, we like to hold on to our clients. So uh, it keeps us all on our toes. Uh, so we have no contract. It's month to month. We hope to keep you as long for a long time as our customer. Um, if you want to get going with a new MLS uh, that we don't integrate to, then we're certainly doing a bunch of those at the moment. Um, we do ask for a little bit of a commitment if we're going to do a new MLS, because obviously we're putting a lot of effort into it, and so are you. And so we ask for a four to six month uh, commitment up front. Uh, that's the only time I ask for a commitment. Okay. 
Thank you. Does anybody have any more questions? All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and end the meeting. Thank you so much, Paul. I think when we um, when I start integrating this into some of the EXP websites, we're going to do case studies and we'll follow up with a, a more advanced meeting. Well, you're very welcome, Sheree. Thanks for the opportunity and I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you bye so much. All right. Bye-bye.